areas to bird here in Southeast Arizona, especially in the month of May. Now, the month of May really is, uh, it, it's well known in the birding world as the best month to go birding, especially in the more northern latitudes that spring migration really ramps up. I remember when I lived in Washington State, May was always the biggest month of birding. It's when you would do all your big days. It's when you would see all your migrants returning. Now for Tucson in Southeast Arizona, a lot of that starts to really happen in April. May, it starts to get hotter. Um, it's a, well, some of our migrants have already passed through. Um, so like we get some remnants of certain species like, um, um, like Wilson's warblers have already kind of moved through a lot. Uh, they'll still come through in May, but really probably the biggest push of Wilson's warbler was probably in April and some other species like that too. A few things to think about for the month of May and, and birding here in Southeast Arizona is that um, the temperatures are gonna start getting hot. Like we don't think of summer starting until June or July or June, I guess. But really summer starts already. It's summer's here, even though we just had some rain. Uh, it was cool the past couple of days. Hey, just be ready. It's going to be in the 90s <laughs> a lot or the hundreds. It's when we get our first 100 degree day usually is in May. So just be aware of that. You need to get out early. Um, but it's beautiful out. This is Sycamore Canyon in the Pajarito Mountains in the month of May last year. You see, uh, probably won't have this much water this year in Sycamore Canyon and in other places, you'll notice that it's going to be really dry. Um, but uh, it's still a beautiful time to get out, especially early in the morning. Uh, also know that uh, there's also, th this is probably one of the best months along with July and August for herps, so snakes and um, uh, heel monsters, uh, you know, tarantulas are really starting to become uh, noticeable. So just be aware of that. In fact, you'll see some snake pictures later on in the talk. Um, as I was looking through all my pictures from the month of May, I was noticing that I was taking a lot of pictures of snakes throughout the year. And it's just like reminding me, there's a lot of snakes out this time of year, which is awesome for some of us, some of us not so much. <laughs> um, so like I said, also in May, the last of our returning breeders uh, start coming except for maybe yellow-billed cuckoo. Yellow-billed cuckoo st probably doesn't come until like June or so. Um, but once we can expect returning in May that we wouldn't have in April on most years, so like thick-billed kingbird, blue grosbeak, varied bunting, sulfur-bellied flycatcher. Those are, those are birds that we don't have in April that start coming back in May. And there they'll stick around here throughout the summer. Spring migration is still really heavy at the beginning of May, but as we get into the end, you start seeing less and less of the migrants. It is when you start getting some kind of different, vagrant, weird migrants coming through. Not necessarily migrants, but I, we call them vagrants. So they're, they've kind of lost their way, and especially warblers. Um, you know, hooded warbler is one that we'll talk about here at the end. Uh, that's our rare bird for the month. I'll let the cat out of the bag for that one. But hooded warblers, one of those vagrant warblers, eastern warblers that usually doesn't come through here, but near the end, middle to end of May becomes kind of noticeable. So you, you're going to want to look for uh, crazy warblers like that or Canada warbler or um, black throated blue, those sort of sort of warblers. So the first area that I want to talk about is a pretty well-known area that I, I realize I haven't spent a whole lot of time on. Um, but May is a fantastic time for the whole Patagonia area. One reason why I haven't specifically talked a lot about this area in the past is because our patent center for hummingbirds hadn't been open. But it's open now. So I'll share a little bit about that here shortly. Um, I'm excited I get to go down there for a little bit tomorrow and, and bird the Patagonia area. I know it's still April, but it's getting into May. Uh, May is a fantastic time to hit some of these hot spots. Uh, some of the, these spots include um, uh, 
the Harshaw Cemetery, of course the Patton Center, uh, the Patagonia Town Park, like right, right along the main road. That can be a really good spot for like cedar wax wings and, and uh, warblers and woodpeckers right through there. The roadside rest area, uh, that's a famous spot just south of Patagonia as you go towards Patagonia Lake State Park. Um, it, it's an amazing spot. And then really my favorite hot spot in the whole Patag Patagonia area, which I don't think gets birded that often, is Harshaw Creek Road. So what I'm gonna do now is I, I wanna show you uh, a little on the eBird map where these hot spots are at. Then I'm gonna show you where the best spot to stop along Harshaw Creek Road is and talk about some of the birds that you might see there. So as we're, oh, not my uh, email, but not that right there, where's our hot spots? Yeah, right here, okay. Everyone see the hot spots there? I think I got it, got it right. So here we have the town of Patagonia and you can see the, these are the Patagonia mountains over here near, near the, the bottom of the screen. There's like a little blue thing here, yellow. So the really red ones like this one right here, that means that that's the most, see this is the Patagonia Sonoda Creek Preserve, 270 species there. And then you go to the green, it's a little less, 138 species. Then you go to the blue, that's less. So it's kind of like a hot spot type of thing, like where uh, a heat map. So where are the most bird species seen? This right here is Spirit Tree Inn. This is Harshaw Creek Road down here at the bottom right. Uh, 477 checklists. So you compare that to right here in the town of Patagonia, this orange one right here. This is the Patent Center for Hummingbirds. And let's see how many checklists. 13,283 checklists at the Patent Center for Hummingbirds. That's pretty incredible. So uh, no wonder there's more bird species seen there than at Harshaw Creek Road. So this just kind of gives you an idea of where these spots are located. You can hit all these spots in one day very easily and spend a whole day doing it. Um, this orange one right here is the Patagonia Roadside Rest. You see well over 4,000 checklists there, 225 species. So that's just to give you an idea of, of where all this is at. Uh, what, what I want to do is go into where Harshaw Creek is a little bit more. If I can get to, uh, here's the Patagonia map. This is a road map from Google Maps. And you come down from Sonoida on 82 and right in town, you'll take a left and you'll get onto this road right here, which is Harshaw Avenue. Goes through some different housing developments. In fact, I'm gonna put it on satellite. I think satellite makes it a little bit better for me to see this. But you stay on this Harshaw Road. And as you, this is paved through here. Now it's gonna turn into gravel there's a split right here. So you can continue, uh, here I'm gonna scroll back just a little bit. You can continue on Harshaw Road, continue south, and then it weaves its way and it goes east towards a, you can go towards the San Rafael grasslands or you can go further south in the Patagonia mountains. Uh, and there's good birding down that way too. That's how you get to the cemetery, which I think is a good spot for Eastern bluebird and some other Mexican jade, birds like that. But for today, what I want to just share is that this little spur that goes here, and it's, uh, this is the Harshaw Creek Road. Now, Harshaw Creek Road goes right by this uh, bed and breakfast called Spirit Tree Inn. Got some huge sycamores right out the front that you'll drive by. It's a beautiful spot. I've never stayed there before. I've heard good things about it. I've only driven by it. And you drive by the Spirit Tree Inn, and this is all gravel, but very very good gravel road like any any car could could do it you don't need a jeep or anything like that to, for high clearance so you just stay on this it weaves by a, a little ranch and right here as it kind of uh let's see let me make sure yeah okay so right here is it kind of weaves around this little curve you can see it's kind of heavily wooded right through here and then 
right here, there is a, a creek crossing. So if we scroll in here, and if you're able to see this, like if you, if you have a good view of it, you can see a little bit of water crossing the road right here. So this is where uh, it's usually I park right before this creek crossing. So I'll find a nice spot alongside the, the road to park over on the on the side. Uh, uh, I think I think it's easier to park on the on the north side of the road or the, the, the northeast side of the road. Uh, this is kind of a cliff area here, but you park here. And then what I usually like doing is uh, to walk down towards where the creek is at. And there's a little little trail. It's kind of like make your own trail, kind of like choose your own path type of thing where you can walk through these woods. There's like sycamores and oak and lots of other different types of trees in, in through here, hackberry. And I love walking right along the Harshaw Creek Road from right where you parked down to this little corner right here. In late April, early to mid to late May, actually all through May, this is a fantastic spot. There's so many birds that you can see through here. I've had some like Montezuma quail, uh, of course, Gamble's quail, along with those Montezuma quail, elegant trogan, northern pig meow. And th those are kind of like those, you know, you know, make you super excited birds. That, and there's a there's a lot more where that came from as well. So we'll cover, we'll go back and look at that here real soon. But once you get done kind of walking through here. Then you go back towards your car and you walk along the road. This isn't a very well, uh, it's not, uh, this road's easy to walk along. There aren't a whole lot of people driving it. And I like to walk this road back up this way towards this little ranch over here. And all, all through these trees right here is great spot for buntings and orioles like bullocks oriole, hooded oriole. Um, I think you could probably find a Scots, probably a Scots oriole up here on the on the south side and in, in these oaks up here. But white-throated swifts, um, great spot for sparrows through here as well. And so it's like I said, it's not heavily birded. It's it's not a spot that um, you know people come from out of town and like, oh, I'm gonna go Harshaw Creek Road. No, it's that they say I'm gonna go to the Patton Center for hummingbirds. Little do they know that there's this spot just like less than 10 minutes away where not only could they add violet crown hummingbirds to their list at the patent center, but they could come over here and find all these kind of mountain birds too, like Arizona woodpecker and Mexican jay, like right next to them. So I'm gonna have a chance for questions here in just a second. Let me, so uh, here are some other birds that you might be able to see along that Harshaw Creek Road area. I uh, mentioned some of them already, but lots and lots of flycatchers. Every time I've been there, I've had a really good mix of flycatchers. And I just list a few of them here. Thick-billed kingbird starts coming in there in May. All of the myarchus flycatchers. So whether it's dusky-capped, brown-crested, ash-throated, you have to know your myarchus flycatchers. Um, I realized that I, I forgot to uh, share my sound. So I'm going to do that, reshare. I, I want to, you to um, understand some of the best ways to identify these myarchus flycatchers, this is a dusky cap, is by their sound. So I'm going to play a quick sound, uh, uh, the song of the dusky cap, actually the call. There it is, there's the whistle. So it's just kind of that, that plaintive whistle. That's one way to find a dusky cap. Like I said, brown crested, ash throated in there too. It's kind of a fun adventure to try and, you know, have all your myarchus together so that you can kind of compare them kind of like Dan was talking about all the swallows she was seeing and sometimes swallows can be hard but when you have a big mix all together it gives you a chance to really start uh, identifying them. Uh, bush tits through there. Uh, we were talking about bullocks orioles earlier. This is a good spot for bullocks orioles. 
the trifecta of tanagers. This is a, a term I've been using more often. Uh, a couple of days ago, we had the trifecta of teal at Sweetwater, green wing, blue wing, and cinnamon. Well, the trifecta of tanagers is Western, summer, and hepatic tanagers. So you can get all three of those there. Buntings, uh, you should have lazuli buntings, especially as you walk along the road uh, towards that ranch. It's just an amazing spot. Tina, what, what kind of questions do we have? I see a few coming in here, I think. Tina, you there? Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> I did, did join the club. That, does, that happens all the time. I'm yeah, um, Krishna asked whether it's it's uh, how safe it is to bird Harsha Road alone. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, I mean, I'm speaking from my point of view, trying to empathize and put myself in the shoes, into your shoes. Uh, but I've never run into anything that would cause me to, to worry. I hardly see anyone on that road. You're really close to the Spirit Tree Inn as well. So like there, it's not like you're uh, very isolated, like you're not down in Sycamore Canyon and the Pararitos on your own. Um, you're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so you are fairly close. I, I think it's okay. You know, as I as I empathize with that, I, I think so. Yeah, and Teresa just said she's a coward and she feels perfectly safe on Harsha Road. So, <laughs> all right, good, good. good. And then um, we had a question about whether where we might find green kingfishers. Well, green kingfisher, not here in Patagonia area so much. I, I think every once in a while. I've heard of a green kingfisher being reported along the Sonoyta Creek towards the roadside rest, but I haven't heard of that for quite some time. The Danza Trail um, in between Tubac and uh, Tamaka Quarry, I think, is where they've been seen lately. Um, but yeah. Okay, and I wanted to ask, what about Patagonia Lake area for this thing, for this particular oh, yeah. May? So Patagonia Lake, definitely good. We won't get into Patagonia Lake today, but um, covered that in a previous uh, talk, but definitely, it, I mean, if you hit uh, these hot spots here, it could take you the whole day or you could, you know, spend part of your day over at the lake too. Um, yeah, it's really good okay that's all we got so far thanks tina so sure. move, moving on into the same area uh the patagonia area is the patent center for hummingbirds which i'm sure most of you are really familiar with there's a calliope hummingbird uh that's feeding on some beautiful flowers this is our pavilion that looks out you know into the kind of historic now back backyard of uh, what used to be Wally and Marion Patton's backyard. Um, and it was closed for quite some time. And just recently at the beginning of this month, we did a quiet reopening of the center. Didn't want to have huge crowds there. Uh, wanted our volunteers and our staff to be able to just kind of see how it would all work. Uh, we're uh, asking people to wear face coverings for the time being while you're on site there. Thank you ahead of time for doing that. But everything I've heard from our volunteers, I'm in, try to stay in close contact with all of them is things are going great down there. Um, the people are, um, and not only are, are the, the birds really enjoying it, but the people are really enjoying it. And um, the bird life down there is fantastic right now. There's been a uh, Rufus back Robin along the uh, Sonoya Creek uh, kind of area just behind the patent center and I'll, sh I'll show you on a map where that's at so that's one that's kind of a rare bird that's being seen around there of course violet crown hummingbirds are uh everywhere as they usually are at the patent center um there's so in our pavilion right now that we do uh have like um uh oh, maximum amount of people allowed in there i think it's 
10 people allowed in the pavilion area at a time. Um, but, you know, people cycle through there and there's a lot of different um, feeders all situated around the patent center and some other trails too. So I'm going to show you um, some of the trail systems that sometimes are kind of underutilized at the patent center. You know, most people think about it just as a feeder and hummingbird spot, but uh, and don't realize that there's also a lot of area there to walk around. So if we come back over here to Patagonia, here's a patent center for hummingbirds right there. You can, if you've never been there before, it, there are some signs that point you in that direction, but it's super easy to get to. Uh, usually what I do is I come down this main drag and I'll take 4th Avenue. And 4th Avenue connects with the road that the patent center is on, Pennsylvania Ave. And you just travel down Pennsylvania Ave, cross the wash, and then here is the patent center for hummingbirds right here. This, this is like where the pavilion is at. In fact, uh, I can't, yeah, look, you can see the pavilion right here. And um, this is the Richard Grand Memorial Meadow. This is where that picture of the hummingbird on the flowers was taken. And there's feeders along this section here at the front of the house. There's feeders all through the meadow, along the road, and behind the house here in the backyard. Uh, and for like that Rufus back robin, it's been seen kind of if you walk down this slough down here, there's kind of a wet area. And that's where I've heard it's being seen. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it myself. I kind of, I'm going to be there tomorrow. I hope I see it tomorrow, but this is where I've heard it's at. Uh, so, you know, take my, you know, I haven't seen it, but that's what I've heard. Now, uh, there is a trail that comes out of the meadow area that goes to the west towards the Sonoida Creek Preserve, and you can take it up into this kind of dry area. It, it, this can be good at times, but the trail that I want to point out to you that maybe you may not know about is back towards the slough, this whole area right through here, you see where I'm circling with my mouse. This is an area that um, we we're able to, um, I, I, I'm not sure if, it's, if we purchased it or if it was given to us, I, I think uh, one or the other. But anyways, this is what we call the cuckoo corridor now. So yellow-billed cuckoos love coming through here. They won't be here in May, but they'll be here in June. That's when they, they're our last returning breeder. But this area right through here would be really good to explore in the month of May. And as you come back towards the slough, there's a little trail that comes up here. We've done lots of uh, invasive weed control and new plantings of grasses and na other native plants all through here. And there's a trail system that some of our volunteers cut out and goes up this way up in here and you can kind of do a little loop. But that, that's a fabulous spot for buntings. I think lazuli buntings will just be all over that place probably this year. That's my guess. Black-headed grosbeak will be another one to really expect through here. Again, Myrcus flycatchers, northern beardless tranulet, and lots of other goodies, summer tanager and Greyhawk. So if you come over to the patent center and you see it's busy or there's no room in the pavilion, no worries, go for a walk. It's an easy walk, it's pretty flat. And then you can come back to the feeders afterwards if you'd like. Um, but it's fairly new, underutilized, and uh, would encourage you to do that. And if you do an eBird list for it and put it under Patent Center for Hummingbirds, maybe just put a note like in your notes in the eBird list, like to say, walk the cuckoo corridor or something like that. Uh, that, that that'd be a good plan. So uh, again, this is a great spot. It's open now. Uh, we're asking people to wear face coverings, but please go and enjoy it. That's what it was made for. Uh, the, Last spot here in the Patagonia area that I want to just briefly talk about is the Patagonia Roadside Rest. How many of you have spent time at the Roadside Rest here before? Or anyone, maybe you got your life or thick-billed kingbird here. I did. Anyone else? 
I've been there, but I didn't see a kingbird. I've been there. You, yeah? Did you see a, a thick-billed kingbird? No? <laughs> I've been there, but I got my thick-billed kingbird at the state park. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's close enough. That's close enough. So I I have a feeling a lot of people have gotten their life or thick-billed kingbird at this Patagonia roadside rest. It's just down the road uh, along the highway, Highway 82 from Patagonia and the Patent Center. And so you just go south here on 82. And let's see, I don't want to pass it up. It's, whoa, where is it at? Is that it right there? Maybe I should go, uh, I'm gonna go over to here. This is a little is further. <laughs> I'll show you on the Ebert map because I can see all the dots here. Here's Patagonia, come down 82. This is it right here, this little orange spot. And you come down on it, you'll see, it's just this little road that kind of loops right here next to the highway. And it got really famous years ago for, there was a, a rare bird scene there. And people stopped to look for that rare bird and they kept on finding new rare birds and new rare birds like the green kingfisher that people saw years ago over here in the Sonoda Creek. Rose Road of Bacards used to nest over here in Sonoda Creek. Uh, the thick bill kingbird, Lucifer hummingbird. So like all these birds started kind of piling up here at this rest stop and it became famous. Now what it's famous for for me is thick billed kingbird. I like to come in here. There's a little area here that I like to stop. And usually uh, in the past, these trees right in here, the kind of southern end of the rest area is where I usually have thick billed kingbird. And they like to be up at the tops of trees, making all sorts of noise and commotion. So they're usually uh, pretty vocal. And so when something's really vocal, I like to play the song for you. So this is what you, you'll be uh, listening for when it comes to Thick Bill Kingbird. And this recording was actually taken at the roadside rest. Not by me, but by someone else. Here we go. Oh, whoop, didn't mean to, meant to play that. Here we go. So they're pretty vocal. They'll be a lot louder than that when you first hear them. And they'll stick out. They got these huge, huge thick bills. They got the yellow under their belly like other yellow bill kingbirds, but um, the really all white throat uh, with coupled with the thick bill and the, the diagnostic call is something that you'll want to be paying attention to. So Tina, before we move into our next spot, next area, any questions there about Patagonia area? Yes. Um, hold on. Let me get back there. I'm on a tablet, so I have to keep running back and forth between the oh, questions. Hey, no, no worries. Thank you so much for helping me out. Do you know if the Snowda Creek has water right now? D wanted to know. I don't know that. My guess is no, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I can't imagine with the least amount of rain we've had that there's any water yeah. there. But And then do you know, uh, oh, Sarah just said Snowda Creek had water last week. Oh yeah, and it probably depends to what part of Sonoda Creek, um, but yes. that's good. I, and I, I wanted to get down there ahead of time, but didn't have time to get down there and, and verify that myself. So thank you. And then do you know if Nature Conservancy Patagonia Preserve is still closed? It is still closed. That's one reason why I didn't bring it up here. Okay. And, and I don't have a timetable for it. Then we got a lot of people who got their kingbirds at the roadside rests. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and nesting the cards and somebody, let's see, Don Nelson got a five stripe sparrow. Oh, there yeah. The five stripe 70s. was another one of those that occurred during that whole Patagonia roadside yeah. effect there. Uh, you know, kind of on the hillside thing, yeah. on the uh, on the side of the road, roadside rest back in the 70s. Oh, oh, yeah. That's great. 
Okay. It's that... just one of those stories that I just get to hear. I didn't get to participate in. So yes. Uh, all right. It looks like all for now. Cool. Thanks, Tina. So let's go a little closer to home. This is uh, a, a place that has had a few different names. Uh, it's had a, some drastic changes over the years. This uh, park in Marana is called El Rio Open Space Preserve. Uh, it used to be called Coach Line Gravel Pit when I first arrived on the scene and back in 2015. It also used to be a uh, Frisbee golf course. So um, <laughs> it's gone through a lot of things. You'll see, uh, so this is a, a little park that um, ended up getting uh, inundated by the Santa Cruz River at different times when the Santa Cruz River would um, push through uh, a burp, one of the berms and the water would come in here from the river, would flood this area. And I'm going to show you the map where it's at. It's just right in Marana or just kind of, I guess, south of, off the Twin Peaks exit. Uh, but the water would come in at different times. And back in 2015 through about 2017 was a really awesome area for all sorts of weird, different uh, shorebirds, pelicans, gulls, uh, all sorts of other uh, kind of exotic things. We, cranes would come in, came in here before. Um, so a really good spot. And then in the past couple of years, it's kind of been, it's, they fixed the berm so that the water wouldn't be coming in from the Santa Cruz River during the monsoons anymore. So it dried up. The town of Mariana has been working on fixing it up to become like an ecotourism area. And recently they started pumping water back into it. And um, so it's become, become and becoming uh, an even better spot to go birding. Uh, a few years ago, Tucson Audubon, in cooperation with the city of Marana and some other entities, put in a butterfly garden, a pollinator garden that you can see here. This is a pretty fun project that a lot of our volunteers worked on and that our staff, restoration staff, participated in, in uh, the collaborative work with, with the city of Marana. It's beautiful right now. Uh, the plants there are just looking great, as you can see here. Um, but let me actually show you on the map where it's at, then we'll talk about birding this little park in Marana. Let's go to New Share. Oh, I gotta say that out loud so I know where I'm going here. So up here, here's Tucson, here's Marana. So Marana is in Northwest Tucson. It, from my house in, Tucson, in Midtown, it takes about 30 minutes. 30, 35 minutes, it depends on how fast I'm driving and how rare of a bird is is that's being seen there, how fast I get there. <laughs> but um, you drive up I-10 toward, like you're going towards Phoenix and you'll take the Twin Peaks Road. So you'll go past Ina, you'll go past Cortero Farms. Your next exit will be Twin Peaks. And as you take Twin Peaks, you'll go over to the west and you'll get to a light right here. And this is uh, Coach Line. Boulevard. That's why it used to be called Coach Line Gravel Pits. And you take a right up Coach Line. This will take you through uh, a bunch of uh, housing divisions. You'll think, uh, where am I going? I'm going through all these housing divisions. And um, you'll go past all this. And then what happens here is this becomes a big open, open area. You can put in El Rio Preserve, that's what it's called on Google Maps, not El Rio Open Space, but it's called El Rio Preserve. So it's, it's a park with many names. You can see here that it's big and open. You can see this whole area where the water from Santa Cruz has kind of filled in over the years and it was dry. And now they put in a nice little parking spot and you just come in here and there's a picnic table. And I'll show you some pictures of what it looks like. Picnic table here. This is where the pollinator garden is at. This is all paved. And there's now, this is a good updated map. They already have this. This is a big uh, platform viewing area that overlooks this big space right here that now is filled with water. So they're pumping it in. I'm not sure where they're pumping it in at, but this 
I'm gonna scroll back a little. This whole area right here has water in it now. I was there yesterday, black neck stilt, solitary sandpiper, green heron, cinnamon till, blue wing till. Uh, maybe not as many swallows as Diane had at Canoe Ranch this morning, but lots of swallows, violet green and cliff and barn and northern rough wing. Um, and so it's, it's a nice little area that's um, easily accessible. This would be a great spot if you had a, a spotting scope too, to be able to look out. You don't necessarily need a spotting scope, but it would be helpful to look out over this whole area. This is a paved pathway that goes here. You can see all of this right here is really barren and open. So that's kind of a bummer that this paved path right here is pretty far away from all this vegetation. It leads over here to this other neighborhood. Um, but if um, you want to go off this main road, this main paved trail, you can come down here and walk out onto this little island. You're making a little trail that goes out here. You can come out here and explore all this really if you want. You can see up here, this is where the Santa Cruz River is at. Used, used to be where I would walk around this whole thing uh, back in like the 16, 2016, 2017. And um, be great for lark sparrow, be good for lazuli bunting, hooded oriole, um, and other birds like that. But what, uh, what the scuttlebutt kind of is with the birding community here is that this is going to turn out to be maybe one of the best spots in the whole area. And uh, it's just kind of at the leading edge of it, the water getting pumped in there. So don't really know exactly how it's going to turn out, but it definitely has like, huge potential. And um, I was talking with one of our volunteer field trip leaders, Ray Deeney, uh, just yesterday. And without me even bringing this up that I was gonna talk about this, he came up to me and said, Luke, I think I wanna start leading bird walks at El Rio starting in September. So he thinks that's when it's gonna be even better. But I just wanted to put this on your radar as a spot that, hey, be thinking about it. I think it's got a lot of potential already has lots of black neck stilts. Here's a few pictures. This is what the parking area looks like. Uh, really easy parking. It's got these nice tables. So if you want a picnic table, so you can have a picnic lunch there after you enjoy checking out the birds. This is what that path to the platform area looks like. And uh, the platform itself is big and open, lots of space. And this is what it overlooks into right now. This is the water level. You can see you want to look at all the edges of the edges of the water. So really, whenever you bird, you always want to look at the edges. Birds and animals, they always love like edges. So be thinking about that. Uh, this is where the mud flats are at. So like solitary sandpiper down in here on the left. Good spot for leaf sandpiper probably Western sandpiper coming through right now too. Baird sandpiper should be coming soon. Uh, American Avocet probably would be another one to be just mindful of looking through here along with any goals or you know, there's gonna be some weird stuff that comes through. Uh, on the right, that's the paved trail that kind of leaves a little to be desired when it comes to vegetation next to it. You'll probably get some verdant or ash flycatcher fly catcher along the edges there. And then this is a trail that goes out kind of into the middle of it. You can see there's been some well-worn trails that always been uh, in the past years when there's been water around there, like good spot for vagrant warblers. So talked about at the beginning, you know, the end of May is always a good time to look for weird warblers that come through. This will be a legit spot to go check for any of those. Uh, Tina, any questions about El Rio Open Space Preserve? Um, no, but I did miss one last time. Um, somebody wanted to know what the hours are uh, of the um, of the patent center. Yes, I missed that dawn, one. Dawn, uh, dawn to dusk, I believe. Okay, yeah, that sounds right to me. That's correct, Luke. Th thanks. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we're going to go further afield. I know. Hi. Looks like I'm. I think I have enough time. Okay. 
I always like to do one area that's uh, fairly well known, that's pretty accessible, that's the Patagonia area. Then I like to do another uh, location that's more in town to be thinking about and to go check out. That's El Rio Open Space. Now this one, not as accessible for everyone. It's a longer drive, but I have to tell you, this is, uh, I have a lot of favorite trails, by the way, but this, this trail right here, the Hamburg Trail that comes out of Ramsey Canyon is a fabulous, fabulous trail to do if you're in hiking shape and want to go and bird somewhere uh, exciting um, in the month of May. So the Hamburg Trail is a special trail that comes out of the Ramsey Canyon uh, Nature Conservancy, which um, is the, uh, the um, visitor kind of info area, like the, the building itself is not open, but uh, they are admitting people to go into the preserve and to, to hike up in there. So there's also limited parking space there at the Ramsey Canyon. But this trail originates at Ramsey Canyon, which is just west of Sierra Vista. It's about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes away from here, probably an hour and a half, 90 minutes or so. Um, and it, it's, um, it's a fairly steep hike. Here, I'm gonna show you on the map where it's at, and then I'm gonna give you some, some a few, point out a few different things here. So let's, uh, we got our map here. Let's go over to this map. And so if you're going over to Sierra Vista, you're going to be taking I-10 to the east from Tucson, and you're going to take Highway 90, which is just before Benson, and you're going to take that all the way down uh, through the city of Sierra Vista. Now, Ramsey Canyon is right here. This is the uh, Ramsey Road. Ramsey Canyon Road comes right off of the highway. And you go west out of Ramsey Canyon Road, and you'll be driving up. Uh, you'll go past the, this is Brown Canyon Trailhead. This is a pretty cool spot to stop too if you have some extra time. Uh, there's a little pond right here. Uh, I like to try and make it a point. Bullock's Oriole. Uh, we were talking about Bullock's Oriole earlier. Brown Canyon Trailhead is a great spot for Bullock's Oriole. But you keep coming up Ramsey Canyon. You'll, you start driving through all these oaks, go through um, past the RV park, the folklore preserve, and right after the Ramsey Canyon Inn, you'll get to the nature preserve here. Now, you can see there's a little parking area right here. You'll park there, you'll pay your admission fee for the preserve, and the trail, uh, Ramsey Canyon Trail comes up here, there's a Bledsoe Loop, and then what the uh, Hamburg Trail does is it comes up over this ridge. Uh, it's a pretty extensive uh, uphill right through there with like some steps. And then it goes down through this creek and then it, it goes into um, the canyon. I have another, let's see, where is it at here? Ah, here it is, Ramsey Canyon the Hamburg Trail. So you can see it's got uh, seven and a half miles out and back or you can do less depending on what you want to do there. But the elevation gain is, is pretty significant. 2,800 elevation gain. So it's a, it's a heavy hike, but if you, if you have the, um, the ability to do it, I, I, it's amazing. So it's the only spot I've ever been where uh, this is the first time I ever did this hike. I was with my wife and I took my two kids with me. They were pretty young at that age. And I can't believe they made it this far. I know my daughter cried, but um, it was still worth it. We had, uh, that was when the tufted flycatcher was being seen up there. And we had a tufted flycatcher up in front of us on the right. We had a red faced warbler right in front of our faces. And we had an elegant trogan on our left all at the same time. And it was, Maybe that's why I love that trail so much is that experience. It's also where I saw my very first Kawadi. And I usually see Kawadis every time I go up there. But just a, a fantastic experience. You can see here, if you look at the full map on all trails, you can see the elevation gain here. It's pretty steep right through here, a few steep spots. 
And um, there's, as you go up this, this is the blood so loop right here of the preserve. You come out of the preserve and you can see the, uh, the creek right here. This is the creek crossing. So you'll come up high and then you'll drop down into this creek crossing. In the past, this has been a really good spot, right? The creek crossing for uh, flame colored tanager. So it might be one of the few spots where you could uh, do better than a trifecta of tanagers. You could add a fourth one, especially if you get the summer tanager back down at Brown Canyon, uh, little trailhead. But this area right here is, in the past, I haven't heard of any reports at all this year of flame colored tanager. And then tough to fly catcher right here, right along Ramsey Creek. Again, haven't heard of any of those this year, but in the past, that's uh, one location where uh, they've been seen. Um, not only is the scenery beautiful, um, but it's a great spot for red-faced warbler. And it's one of the best spots I've ever had for, this is a bad picture, but the only picture I could bring up that I had of one of the black-tailed rattlesnakes that I've seen along this trail. Maybe the most beautiful rattlesnake um, that we have. And multiple times on this trail, I've had the black-tailed uh, rattlesnakes uh, through here from about late April through July is when I've seen them. Of course, they could probably be there other times too. But like I said, a really, really steep uh, gain at 2,800 feet. But beautiful habitat, beautiful scenery. Uh, I encourage you to do that if you can. Uh, Tina, any questions about um, about this this area here on the Hamburg Trail? Just one about what the cost was, but it was on that page you showed uh, the eight dollar charge yep. unless you're a local resident. So yeah, if you're a Cochise County resident, I believe it's cheaper. Five dollars it looks like for local residents is what they called it. I assume that meant somewhere like Sierra yeah. or Cochise County. I think County it's I think something. it's a Cochise County resident. Yeah, so three dollars off, so you can. Uh, Almost buy a Starbucks. <laughs> yes, almost. <laughs> almost. Uh, hey, so I have a couple other things I want to touch base on here. Oh, there is one other question that just came okay. in while we were talking. Is there yeah. a, a simpler trail close by from? Uh, yeah, so the, at is. the Ramsey Canyon Preserve, uh, you don't have to. Yeah, you could just stay on the trails at Ramsey Canyon. There's a little bit of uphill, but you wouldn't have that 2,800 foot elevation gain. As you walk around the trails at Ramsey Canyon, you'll be under huge sycamores. You'll have dusky cat flycatcher. Silver belly flycatcher starts coming back in May. So like in mid-May would be a great time uh, to hear sulfur belly flycatchers and to see them there. It's also great for Western tanager and uh, wild turkey and Mexican jay and Rivoli's hummingbird. So you don't have to, a, a, a good easier way of, of doing that same sort of habitat with going all the way up into um, the further reaches of Ramsey Canyon and along the Ramsey Creek is just staying right in the preserve itself. Um, and it's, that's often what I do when I take my kids there. I was just really adamant in getting my kids up to where the Tufted Flycatchers were at because that's where I wanted to see. That's what I wanted to see. And so I <laughs> kind of drug them up there. But most of the time when I'm with my kids or when I'm with my parents, you know, and they aren't able to do that big long hike, we are more than happy to just stay right in the preserve and to enjoy that area. And I yeah, do there recognize are, they, that they, some people like to do those longer hikes and want to know about those as well. So um, uh, they have uh, a lot of the hummingbird feeders up there at the Ramsey Canyon near the um, near the shack where you buy, you know, the gift shop. And yeah, stuff. right by the visitor center. Even though the visitor, visitor center, center is yeah. closed, I I believe they're filling the hummingbird feeders, but I, I don't know that for sure. And um, I think Dee said that they're closed on, that Ramsey Canyon is closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. 
Good point. Thank you, D. That's that's a point I should have put right here in the what to expect is that yes, Ramsey Canyon is closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's always a surprise to people. It still surprises me sometimes. Um, there is a back way into getting onto the Hamburg Trail if you want to do that out, you know, on a Tuesday or Wednesday instead of going uh, to Ramsey Canyon. Now, if you're, you're really adventurous, this is what I want to want to show you because <laughs> uh, we like adventure. So instead of accessing the Hamburg Trail from Ramsey Canyon Preserve, another really good birding location is coming up Car Canyon. So Car Canyon is just a little further than Ramsey Canyon Road. You take Car Canyon Road to the east off of Highway 92 and you follow it up here. Now this is, this road can get kind of nasty. I, uh, I don't know if I would take a regular sedan up Car Canyon Road. Maybe yeah, up that's to the what car I've house is too. fine. But once you get past the car house, which actually this is a fantastic spot to go as well. Uh, I should have put this on the other places to go. In fact, I love the car house. I don't know why I haven't talked about that. Um, but this road gets can get really bad. You can see these kind of hairpin turns right here. Well, this is crazy. You're going up this road and you're thinking, what am I doing? Driving a 15 passenger van up this and people on the back, you know, they're like uh, trying not to lose their lunch and they're coming <laughs> up here. Um, just some amazing spots. This waterfall overlook is a great spot for Scott's Oriole. Uh, love that spot and white-throated Swift. And then you can see back and forth, back and forth all through here. Free campground as is a well-known spot for possibly tufted flycatcher, but also really good for buff-breasted flycatcher. All right, so I'll get through this, but once you get to the end of Car Canyon Road, this is Ram Ramsey Vista Campground. And so from Ramsey Vista Campground, you can see there's a little bit of a trail that comes out here. And this is called the Comfort Springs Trail. This Comfort Springs Trail winds around here and uh, will cross Comfort Springs. This is a pretty good area for vagrant uh, warblers and other rare birds right through here. But this comes down through this little canyon right here into this is where the Hamburg Trail is at. So it connects with the Hamburg Trail and you, you can actually go from Ramsey Vista Campground all the way over. Uh, let me make sure I got, oh, here's Ramsey. You go from Ramsey Vista Campground all the way down here to Ramsey Canyon Inn. I've done that one time. It is a crazy hike, but it is, it is awesome. You're in this most of the time in really thick forest the drain evergreen you got a mix of sycamore and then you have douglas fir and then you have ponderous pine it's this huge mix of stuff and um it, it makes for a really cool hike especially if you have someone parked over here at the ramsey canyon or vice versa so you don't have to make the trek back um but it that's that's another way of doing it Cool. So here's some other spots to be thinking about for the, the month of May. I can't talk about all of these. I wish I could. But if you have questions about any of these, feel free to email me and reach out to me and I can see what I can do to help you out. Aravaca Cienega is great in May for buntings of all types. I remember last year there was a really good sunflower bloom and there was um, not only lazuli, but there was also some uh, varied bunting. There was some painted bunting, and I believe there's indigo bunting at different times through there as well. And um, Bottery Sparrow, Blue Gross Beak, th Thick Billed Kingbird will show up at Aravaca Cienega. Sycamore Canyon is in the Paruito Mountains is good any time of the year, but I love it in May. And uh, Elegant Trogan, if you if you go down far enough in Sycamore Canyon, is is almost a gimme, about a mile and a half into Sycamore Canyon. Uh, again, it's it's kind of it's not as it's not steep like Hamburg Trail, but it's um, not a very um, 
the, the trail isn't always easily seen. So it's kind of can kind of be a hard canyon to get into, but it's it's amazingly beautiful. Lake Cochise near Wilcox in May, always good for shorebirds and gulls and other weird things that come through there. Maybe a uh, roseate spoonbill or something like that. If you're going over the Chiricahua Mountains, you got to stop at Lake Cochise and just see if you find a Franklin's goal or something like that. Uh, sweetwater wetlands, you know, a tropical kingbird is one, uh, a breeding bird that if you want to look for it in Tucson, really the only spot you're going to find it is sweetwater. But they'll come back about the mid, mid May. It's a beautiful, really bright yellow kingbird. Uh, so just be looking for that there. Now, I haven't been up Mount Lemmon recently since all the fires, So, but what I've heard is that there are places along Marshall Gulch and Incinerator Ridge Road that are still really good for red-faced warblers. So um, it's usually a spot that I would recommend going in May. I haven't been up there to be able to talk that intelligently about um, what's going on up there. And then May is also when buff color night jars come back to California Gulch and Warsaw Canyon. Um, you can find these locations on eBird. Don't have time to get into all of them right now, but these um, are fantastic spots to check out this coming month. Uh, Luke, Joe just yeah. said that um, the Aravaca Cienega is technically closed because they're doing some construction there uh, for of a boardwalk or something. Oh, I did not know that. And that, uh, let's see, who said this? Uh, Marshall, D said Marshall Gulch Trail is closed until fall. And I do remember seeing something in the paper not too long ago that there were still a bunch of trails closed up in, uh, up Mount Lemon. Okay, so delete Marshall Gulch, just keep Incinerator Ridge Road, which I know <laughs> is open. And then <laughs> keep, put a pin in it for Aravaca Cienega and visit it next May or June is good too, if it's open then. But I'm sorry about that, guys. I, I did not know those two things. Thank you that's for why, letting us know. I, we appreciate it. That's why we have people that can help us do this. Yeah, yeah. One person All does not know everything. Know stuff. <laughs> yes, hey, I also want to do I've... like a quick bonus. Like I said, May is awesome for birds, but it's also really, really good for snakes. This is a sidewinder. Uh, picture taken by my friend Bob Ornstein. He's a volunteer with Tucson Audubon. There's a really good spot for uh, sidewinders, uh, Ironwood uh, Tree uh, National Monument. Um, May is just awesome for snakes in general. Uh, in Sabino Canyon, it's a great time to look for coral snake and tiger rattlesnake. Uh, just keep your eyes open. And if you see anything fun, let me know. I'd love to hear about it. So I'm all about looking for snakes and rare bird of the month hooded warbler talked about this a little bit already but look for a wilson's warbler that isn't a wilson's warbler so you can see it superficially pretty close to wilson's warbler but wilson's wouldn't have the full uh black hood that comes all the way around its face and onto its throat and that male hooded warbler when you see it really sticks out uh, Look in May for it because the past couple of Mays have been really good for hooded warbler. It's a fun bird to see. Whereabouts do you find those? Yes, uh, they can kind of show up just about anywhere, but um, the Anza Trail is good for it. Um, uh, there's some different canyons like Rock Corral Canyon. I've had it through there. Uh, the different parks here in Tucson. So like El Rio could be a, a great spot for a hooded warbler to show up. Um, I would also think that, you know, maybe, uh, you know, somewhere like um, uh, Wentworth Road, Tinkerverde Wash would be another good spot for possibly Hooded Warbler or uh, Empire Ranch, uh, the Gulch there in La Cienegas could be a good spot. And those are some areas I would think about. There's so many spots. <laughs> All right, that looks like right now, I don't, let me see. Everybody's thanking you. Um, oh, D, you had a hooded warbler parrot proctor last week? 
Tell us about that. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> I see you talking. <laughs> there you okay. go. Yeah, walking um, down the road at Proctor to the that first bench creek area where the, the really large trees are. Yeah. Uh, I got some good pictures of the female. I didn't get a picture of the male, but it was there too. Well, you know, I'm going to be in that area tomorrow. So I'm going to look at that same exact spot that you just mentioned. Ooh. And hopefully I'll come across it. Hope you see it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, any any other questions that I can uh, help with here? Uh, thank you, Tina, so much for helping me out there on last second. I so appreciate that. Sure, uh, not a problem. Oh, Judy had a uh, pair there last spring, summer, too. Yeah. Yeah, so Proctor Road, that's a good spot for Hooded Warbler. <laughs> Obviously, yep. yeah. I'm going to uh, El Rio on May 4th for, uh, I don't know, a parks and rec walk so we'll see how that goes oh, cool. yeah. luke i had no idea that the hooded was something special they yeah were there, judy they were i'm glad you saw that last, it is i think it's last special. spring and summer and then they're back i have another pair back again i, I see them maybe every 15 minutes throughout the entire day cool whereabouts are you um miracle General. mile in between Oriole or Oracle and Highway 10, right wow. here at the Evergreen Cemetery area. Oh yeah, that would make yeah. sense. Yep. Yep. Cool. Thanks for sharing that, Judy. A any other questions that I can help with? Luke, where is Proctor Road? Good question, Teresa. Here, I'll show that and then we'll we'll wrap up. So let me get to my share screen. And let me, here's our, I love Google Maps, don't we all? It makes it so easy. So here's Tucson right up here at the top. And you drive down I-19 uh, towards Madera Canyon and Green Valley. You'll take the, the continental exit and you'll take the road out towards Madera Canyon. You can see, yeah, White House Canyon Road is what it's called. And you follow that road out to Madera, you follow it south. This is going right to Madera. And uh, let me scroll back here. So right here, as you're coming into Madera, uh, if you've ever been there, you start climbing up the road and it goes through oaks and then it gets into the Madrain Evergreen and the Sycamores. You have the different picnic areas that come up here. Well, the first, little Madera area, uh, parking area that you'll see is for Proctor, it's called Proctor Road Parking. And you're just barely getting into the oak trees. It's still pretty much like oak grassland area. And let me get to this, I'll show it a little bit better. So you can see there's a little road that you come out here, there's a little what used to be a ranger station right there. And you come in here and there's parking right here. You park there, it's $8 uh, to park in Madera Canyon or if you have, have a pass. And so when you park there, you can take this little trail that comes out here. And if I'm, if I'm hearing from D, the directions that I'm thinking of, I believe it's right here in this area where there's some big sycamores. This looks like it was taken kind of in winter so it's kind of looks pretty bare but this is pretty thick right in here and there's a little bench bench and and there's uh some sycamore trees here and uh the creek kind of runs through here and this would be an area that i would look so this is that's the proctor road parking area and then this trail goes all the way up madera canyon and you can take this trail all the way up to the um, parking area if you'd like and that's where it's at Thank but you. it's a it's a good spot. Uh, it, you know, it gets hotter down here, so start there earlier in the morning. There's a lot of uh, 
of summer tanagers there usually yes. too at this time. Oh, Julie, yeah, you're right. Lots, and you know what, Luke? I may have been mistaken because it was hooded orioles that I saw. Oh, okay. And you said, I'm sorry, you said hooded warblers, but it hooded was warbler. hooded warbler. I might have said hooded oriole too, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, there are lots of Orioles and tanagers there and, and buntings mm -hmm. too. And um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Fantastic spot for hooded right, Orioles. You're, yeah. you're still right. Oh no, it's all right. No. Cause I could see this as a spot where you could see hooded, hooded warbler for sure. So it, mm -hmm. th we should still be, and I'll still look there tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> if I see one, I'll think of you. Luke, I'm talking about hooded Orioles too. Okay, okay. Well, so I'm, just be thinking about all the different hoodeds that we could see. There's a, a gold. There's probably some other, you know, hood, uh, hooded crow. I think there's a hooded crow. But uh, so month of May, near middle or end of May, be thinking a hooded warbler. I'm very I'm, sorry. I, no, no worries. That's no why worries. I, I was confused. I thought, what's the big deal? Doesn't everybody have hooded Oreos? I still get excited about hooded Oreo too. Oh. So. No worries. <laughs> hey, I want to thank everyone, exactly. especially you, Tina. Thanks again. And hey, um, do, we're do gonna you have close fun? up here, but I hope you have a great, <laughs> great rest of your your day and a uh, good month of birding. Nancy, I just realized we didn't get to do the Eber thing that we had talked about, but next time I see you ahead of time, I'll do okay. that. Okay, we'll I'll, do I'll that. Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> thanks to you all. See you later. Thank thanks you. Thank you. Bye.